Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community. And The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 326 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Today, recording day is Tuesday, February 27th, 2024, and I'd like to wish a happy 20th anniversary to my good friend, Ray. You may recognize him because he used to be with Cryer, and he joined us for an episode when uh, Christine Sinclair was about to retire, and his beautiful, beautiful life partner, Kate, who are celebrating their 20th anniversary by actually tying the knot today. It is today, right? Yeah. It is today. So it's all about the love, kitties. It's all about the love, and you know the beaver loves the love. So... I'm so happy. I'm so happy. You know, I I often think, I told Ray, you know, I I think that my sweetie and I are the cutest couple out there because, you know, we're somewhat cavity inducing, but um, (laughs) they are worthy competition. Cavity inducing. Oh, yes. (laughs) But they are very, very worthy competition. So uh, I hope the day is fabulous and as wonderful as you hope it would be. And you just saw something. The high today is 16. I know. I know. This is not normal. 16 in February. I know. I've already been on my bike twice this year. And I'm not a winter biker, like at all. At all. This is bizarre, though. 16 today, 13 tomorrow, minus 7 on Thursday, plus 4 on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Mother Nature's pissed. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> hey, 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 I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, hey, and with me, as you can hear, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly, looking very sharp, I must say. Thank you. There you go. Ah, big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss Fee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have, uh, we really do have a nibble for you because Mr. Mm-hmm. Grizzly has a heart out at 745. And I will try to make sure that that happens because we both have that gift of the gap. Well, but, uh, it's, it's board meetings today and tomorrow. And usually uh, when the board meeting takes place, I have to be in the office for seven. So I would conduct the uh, show from there. But And and I would be jumping in and out constantly. Mm. But they're like, no, no, we're starting at 830. Uh, so if you can be here for eight o'clock to get things set up, I'm like, okay, no problem. I, I can do that. That's, that's yep. easy. Well, we will do our, we will, we will get you off the air on uh, 7.45. Notice I said we will get you off the air. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, that's already, I just, I just took the blade to it. Man. I'll get you off the air there, eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the air on your head. <laughs> so where did we begin this morning? I, um, um, you know what? There, there is the online harness bill uh, yes. that was introduced. Um, so maybe we'll talk briefly about that and then we'll get into the, thing that yeah. will probably yeah well it's that, like, that discussion with david parker because if we start with that we'll just go the full 45 minutes on that and never touch anything else you're right yeah we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll take that second i did put in the, in the 
the just the brief description and uh, i did see the the aaron bushnell video if you don't know who that is uh, what video aaron bushnell nope the former active service member whom self humiliated oh, yes in front of the israeli embassy in washington dc yes it is absolutely gut-wrenching heartbreaking and is going to stick with you for a very long time i didn't seek it out it just kind of showed up and i'm like what the hell is this and i i didn't know who he like who i didn't know his name and i didn't know i didn't know uh what took place and it starts off with him just walking down the street talking about you know the things and then then you see him do what he did and it's like and then the worst part of it was uh, I'm not going to name names, but the individual pointing a gun at him in A-frame stance while he's lying on the ground, burning to death, mm -hmm. pointing a gun at him. And one of the other first responders screamed, I don't need guns, I need fire extinguishers. It, it's, uh, uh, you're adults, you make your own decisions. If you want to watch it, you can find it. I didn't seek it out. It just came across my feed, and I and somebody said, you have to watch this. I'm like, okay, what, is, what am I looking at here? And then when I saw him dump the accelerant on his head, I got, oh, no. It, it's going to haunt you. If you watch it, it will haunt you. It will stick with you. It will break your heart. It will make you feel things that you probably had pushed down deep inside for a long time. And I, you're an adult. Do what you want to do. But I'm telling you, if you watch it, it's going to haunt you. Yeah. No. The the. I don't. Uh, I'm glad you told me because I don't need to see that. I don't. I but I too wouldn't know how to recognize it because I don't know what the guy looks like or all I know is that it happened. Well, somebody in army uh, army fatigues walking down the street holding a phone, talking into the camera frequently. Hmm. That's how to recognize the start of the video. The ending you will not forget. Yeah. Because I didn't, uh, you know, when that Luca Magnata thing happened to, I didn't watch that. And mm -hmm. I, there are certain things I don't need to see. Correct. I didn't, I didn't need to see. Yeah, that. no, no. It, I know that's what I mean. That's, that's the thing with the net is that sometimes yeah. you don't know what you're about to see. You, you don't get to consent sometimes to what you're about to see. Exactly. There was no warning. It just said you need to see this. I'm like, well, what is it? Well, okay, I'll just. Well, what's this I mean, about? you know, I it is dramatic, and you know, so I mean, I can understand somebody saying you need to see it, but nobody needs to see that. That's who yeah. Um, he was 25 years old. Jeez, 25 years old, and uh, one of the things he said was, you know, if if you if you're asking yourself, what would you have done during Jim Crow and slavery and this and that, you know, and, and during the Holocaust, what would you have done? Well, you're doing it right now because this is taking place. That was the last thing I think he tweeted out. And then, yeah, he kept screaming free Palestine the entire time. Jeez. It's heartbreaking. And I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to discuss it because it stuck with me last night. It messed my whole night up. I couldn't do my ASMR. I had a terrible migraine. I just lied on the couch and was kind of quiet. It was not an easy thing to witness. Now, I know that's like, I'm, oh my God, Paul, you're suffering so terribly, you poor white male. I'm not trying to paint myself as somebody who was victimized here. That's not the thing at all. I'm trying to tell you, if you see the video, as a human. It, will, it will haunt you. It will haunt you because as a human being who has thoughts, feelings, and emotions, this will stick with you. Jeez. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I I don't have the internal hardwiring to handle that. I, I you, mean, you I don't, already know I'm that. You, it, it will mess you up if you watch it. You will need therapy. Jeez. I can handle it because I've seen a lot of terrible things. I, I don't, that's not something to brag about. Um, but I've seen a lot of terrible things, and then that ranks up there with the top three. Oh my word! Gee, my friend, I am. I'm. I don't even know. If sorry to hear that is the right word, but it's no. Just, it's, it's, I, it's, it's 
you know, it's not, it's not about me. No, no, I know that. Um, it's just, I'm telling you, you're adults, you make your own decisions. If you want to watch it, there's plenty of places to find it. Be cautioned is all I'm telling you. All right. Caution heard. Um, Yesterday, according to the CBC, a long-awaited online harms bill proposed higher sentences for spreading hate online. It says the Liberal government is proposing heavier sentences, new regulatory bodies, and changes to a number of laws in new legislation to tackle online abuse. The Online Harms Act, tabled yesterday, proposes to police seven categories of harmful harmful content online. Those categories include content used to bully a child and content that encourages a child to harm themselves. They also include hate speech, content that incites violence or terrorism, content that sexualizes children or victims of sexual violence, and sexual content that is posted without consent. And as we've mentioned on our show before, uh, one of the reasons that PP came out swinging against this before he had even read it is that most of these categories are activities that uh, people whose votes he's courting engage in online. And therefore... He cannot stand in opposition to these things that can cause harm to children, but not only to children, to anybody else. It's not just children that could be the victims of sextortion and you know, hate speech online or that type of stuff. So he's um, not for it. And of course, he tried, to, as we mentioned, to deflect on that by talking about Bill S210 and digital access to porn sites and all that kind of stuff and Trudeau blackface and because to get him to comment on this and on the actual measures, you know, it, it's almost a reverse conservative move where the conservatives, for example, propose from the back bench a bill to protect pregnant women. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like this. And then they turn around and say, you know, but really it's a backdoor bill for, you know, to try to get an abortion line. And, yes. and then they say, why don't you want to protect pregnant women? Well, here we already have laws. Liberals, for yeah. Well, here liberals are. Pro- uh, you know, uh, proposing an online harms bill for the protection of, of course, among other people, children, and they're going to mm-hmm. focus on the child aspect of it, and it's going to get put PP in a position to say, well, I can't support it because he's going to lose more people to the PPC if he yeah. says that he does, and then the liberals can say, well, why don't you want to protect children? So yeah. there's a, some strategy going on here too, which is why PP tried to change the channel quickly to blackface and porn sites because mm-hmm. you know, or click for dick. Um, because he doesn't want to talk about the substance of this bill because it can't make him look good. Because, again, there's seven categories of things, and he has to say no to all seven of them. Justice Minister Araf Arani told a press conference Monday, we cannot tolerate anarchy on the Internet. The safety, mental health, and even the lives of our kids and our most vulnerable are at stake. The act would amend the criminal code to increase sentences for spreading hate online. It would boost the maximum sentence for advocating genocide from five years to life imprisonment. And uh, the sentence for um, advocating hate online, I think, would increase from two years to five years, uh, from what I heard on the news. The legislation would also make it a separate offense to carry out a crime motivated by hate. The Canadian Human Rights Act would be amended to allow complaints about online hate speech to be filed with the Canadian Human Rights Commission. The legislation would see the government establish a five-member digital safety commission to enforce the new rules. The commission would be empowered to order the removal of online content that sexualizes children or victims of sexual violence and sexual content that is posted without consent. And at his press conference, he had um, a mother there speaking whose child had um, been abused by an adult that they should have been able to trust uh, for quite a long time and he, that person put uh, the video content online and therefore that uh, child is now older and well she's quite aware that there are images of her at a very 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 young age online and uh, with things being done to her mm-hmm. <clears throat> that again no person should be seeing or doing but it seems a lot of people like to do it and see it <sighs> or at least far too many if not a lot. And, um, you know, she's grown up with that and, you know, it's all the matters that it's affected her life. So he had some compelling speakers with him who could uh, really make the case for the need for this type of bill. 
The government is proposing to establish a digital safety ombudsperson who would offer support to victims and guidance to social media companies. And it's also looking to amend a current law that makes it mandatory for internet services to report instances of child sex abuse images online. It says it wants to ensure these rules apply to social media platforms and proposes to, quote, create authority to centralize mandatory reporting of such offenses through a designated law enforcement body. Barani insisted that private message services such as email won't be covered by the legislation. Quote, we're doing this now in a very measured and appropriate manner that addresses the harms as we see them, but ensures that Canadians' private communications will be exempt, he said. The legislation would impose new responsibilities on online platforms. Companies would be expected, expected to assess, minimize, and report risks to users and provide tools to allow users to flag harmful content. Platforms would be expected to remove certain content, content that sexualizes children or victims of sexual violence, and sexual content that is posted without consent, within 24 hours of a complaint being filed. Online platforms covered by the bill include social media sites, live streaming platforms, and user-uploaded adult content, says the bill. Companies that don't follow the new regulations could face fines of up to $10 million or 6% of their global revenues. Meta, the parent company for social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram, indicated it plans to work with the government. Interesting that it plans to work with the government on this, but didn't want to work with them on compensating news companies for the value of their news. Yeah. But Meta, at least, Meta appears to be in on this. Quote, we support the federal government's goal of helping young people have safe, positive experiences online and have spent more than a decade developing industry-leading tools and policies to protect them. We look forward to collaborating with lawmakers and industry peers on our long-standing priority to keep Canadians safe, the company said in a media statement. The Liberals pledged during the 2021 election to campaign to introduce online harms legislation within the first 100 days of being re-elected. Instead of meeting that self-imposed deadline, the government waited until March of 2022 to announce that it had created an expert advisory group as, quote, the next step in developing legislation to address harmful online content. And the reason for this is that the bill was complicated, obviously, by mm -hmm. privacy rights and human rights and whatnot. It wasn't just as easy as saying we're going to pass a bill that had to strike the right balance uh, to still be constitutional. NDP leader Jagmeet Singh indicated that his party would support the bill, but he criticized the Liberals for not acting sooner. Quote, their inaction has meant that kids were harmed, that kids were actually exploited online because they failed to act, he said. Farani defended the amount of time the government took to bring the bill forward by saying we did work on it for a long time because we had to get it right. <sighs> so Jagmeet Singh again just cannot take a damn win. <sighs> The bill is very important. Those are the, the details that we have until now. I'm sure we're going to find out more as the days come and as people explore it. But uh, we just want to make sure that uh, you were aware because it's a significant and major piece of legislation. And uh, it's going to be interesting to watch the conservatives uh, do that dance as to why it is they can't uh, support, can't support it, it yeah. well, like I'm, they did on uh, Ukrainian free trade. So they're going to have to invent some type of reason. So of we're going to see what the bullshit's going to be. Well, I'm I'm scrolling through it right now, and some of the the feedback online is just people are tearing it apart. And then the response to some people: Have you read it yet? No. Yep. 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 But it's the liberals who wrote it, so I know it's terrible. You know, yep. I lost all respect for Jack Layton when he said that about a budget. Have you read the? But I'm I'm voting against it. Have you read it yet? No. But it's it's from Stephen Harper, so I'm going to vote against it. I'm like, look, man, I hate Harper too, but guess what? Read the damn thing first. If you pass judgment over something that you've not read, you're a fucking asshole. Seriously. I, 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 I don't back down on that one. If you pass judgment over a document that you've not read, you're a fucking asshole. Yep. You're a prejudicial you asshole at that. Yep. Read the damn thing and then form an opinion. I have no opinion on the bill because I haven't read it yet. Hmm. I haven't read it yet either. I only know what I had, what I see there. It's I, 104 the pages, article. so there's a lot of reading. Yeah. JB yeah. is pouring through it, and I know he's going to do a, a full special on it. I just saw a thing from him there, so it's like I will check that out later because he will go through it with a fine-tooth comb. I know you'll do the same thing when you have the time, and maybe we'll, we'll dedicate a show to that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have time for a while, though. No, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. <sighs> the show's open soon. But uh, yeah, just wanted to, to make sure that that information was out there in case anybody had a chance to catch it through the news or actually read uh, the article. 
So uh, we are dealing in, uh, like I said, a, a wide variety of areas here. Now, there is nothing about specifically on, uh, online access to porn sites yeah. with regard to this. Uh, the pornographic elements seem to be more on uh, child porn, exploitation of sexual victims, uh, and uh, sharing of uncon- unconsensual sharing of images, such as, for example, revenge porn or that type of stuff, right? Or humiliation porn or, you know exes that break up with each other and then somebody wants to get back at the ex for having done them wrong and posts pictures that were consensually taken when they were together but for which they have no consent to share so the those would be the more pornographic elements with uh, uh, contained in this bill specifically all right mr grizzly <sighs> You had uh, titled, uh, t- we always have a provisional title for the show when we are, when we air, and Mr. Grizzly uh, chooses that and writes the initial description, and then, and then we, I get to the show, and I kind of usually blow all of that up. <laughs> but uh, today, uh, he put in, do we talk about David Parker? And uh, yesterday, uh, on the network, Dean Blundell managed to, to snag David Parker for an interview, or not so much an interview, I guess it ended up being a conversation when mm-hmm. I learned during it that the intent is for it to be a series. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, during the conversation, we heard that uh, our friend Kit James also uh, managed to make a time for an interview with him. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to actually let you go first this time because I don't want to bias you, but I do have some thoughts about what it is that uh, we saw. Okay. I'm going to let you go first, Mr. Wesley, because I don't so to begin with, he started off, he started off by saying, I'm going to apologize and forgive Justin Trudeau for not allowing me to do all the things that my actual, I'm going to paraphrase now and insert my own thoughts into this, uh, not allow me to go to my grandmother's funeral and visit people in the hospital. But those were provincial mandates, you stupid fucking misinformation gaslighting asshole. Yeah, David Parker, I'm pointing directly at you. You're a fucking liar. Those were provincial mandates, not federal. So stop that shit right now. Then I'm going to go on about James Lindsay. What a special little boy he is. He goes, oh, they are teaching, they are teaching radical gender ideology in schools. James Lindsay has written all about it. James Lindsay is a fucking quack. He's a conspiracy theorist fucking quack who has been dismissed by other libertarians because of his conspiracy theories. He's got the whole white replacement thing going on. It's bullshit. You start writing about stuff like that, I'm writing you off because you're full of shit. They are not training or grooming children to be trans in school and Hmm. parker if you actually believe that i have got some northern saskatchewan oceanfront property to sell you sir great price according to wikipedia it says that james Lindsay is known for the grievance studies affair in which he peter bogosian and helen pluckow submitted hoax articles to academic journals in 2017 and 2018 to test scholarship and rigor in several academic fields He sounds nice. Yeah. Look, Parker's not an idiot. He's not. He's a manipulator, and he's good at it. He's not a good person. Likes to tell tell you that he's Christian. Well, I you know I don't mind people. They can. I just I just I just. You're kind of trying to change people. They are not teaching those things in school. How do I know this? We have school teachers in the chat right now. They can authenticate that those things do not get taught in schools. They will teach you that there are different people. Some people are gay, some people are bi, some people are trans. But they're not grooming you to be that way. That's not the thing. Then he went on about his, well, you know, I'm against uh, gender reassignment surgery for children. Um, Okay. The law is you can't do that. So So it's not so much the law. It's it's going to be the law in Alberta, but it's, just the practice of the medical community. The yeah. medical community has already decided that. They don't do it, period. They don't do it. The bottom surgery is not a thing for anybody under the age of 18, period. Period. So 
you know, I, I, Dean did confront him about um, the clip we played from uh, the breakdown about the doctor who talked about his nephew, his trans nephew who committed suicide. And Parker kind of backed away from that one. Again, Parker's not stupid. He is an asshole, but he's not stupid. There is a difference. He's not stupid. He knows how to manipulate and massage and steer the conversation in the direction he wants to take it. And he's great at avoiding questions by doing Pierre Polyev's thing and asking you a question. It's like, no, it's not an answer. He's not stupid, but he's a manipulative little shit. And he tried to come across as a good Christian by forgiving Justin Trudeau for the things that Jason Kenney did. This is a dangerous man. He's not good. Sure, he has his principles and he believes in a couple of things that we would actually believe in. We would like to see some honesty in politics and we'd like to see some principles and backbone. And more participation. And more participation. We agree with him on those three things. But that's kind of it. But again, it's not what you believe in. It's what you do in furtherance of those beliefs. Exactly. Keep on saying that on the show. Yes, Jen, you've got this correct. It was the angriest forgiveness I've ever seen. Yep. It was just really weird that he talked about forgiveness because we did too on our show. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm just like sitting there and going, wow. I was like, that's, that's, it's kind of like, I mean, clearly I'm pretty sure David Parker doesn't watch our show. Um, but it was just one of those sort of things. It's like, gee, there seems to be a theme in the air today. Um, I, um, I had a, I hate to say this because I love Dean. Mm -hmm. um, I was done with that interview and, or that conversation. I was like, what the fuck was that? Mm -hmm. Seriously. Um, the whole opening with the forgiveness thing was like, you know, when Jen says that was the angriest forgiveness I've ever seen. He basically forgave Trudeau because he thought that if he did, he would encourage other people. It was almost like this reverse psychology stuff. Yeah, it's a manipulation. Well, no, but not only that, the reason, he basically said the reason I'm forgiving Trudeau is that I hope that it will make it easier for people to unvote him. Because mm -hmm. if I stay mad at him, then people will want to keep him in just to spite me. So I will forgive him. And therefore, now that I've forgiven them, all of you can now feel free to not vote for him. If it's you're complete forgiving bullshit. Giving someone because you want them to be voted out you're not you've lost the plot of forgiveness you're just using forgiveness as a as a tool to reach a utilitarian end here um that's not what forgiveness is about i i don't forgive you for the thing it'd be like me saying you know you did me wrong mr grizzly so i forgive you in hopes that your boss will now fire you yeah yeah it's like uh okay um he um talked about you know needing to apologize to a whole bunch of people um he had already done that though mm -hmm. i was reading this article and um he had apologized to all the people that said that they didn't want him to come on that show and do that before putting out those tweets about jenny byrne and pierre polyev mm -hmm. because some people because he had put out um, some tweets before, um, and this right here is one of them. We showed you the one previously of um, on the, on another show of uh, what he had to say about Nahid Nenshi, saying that he was grotesque, and doesn't understand how anyone could find him sexy. Well, he also, um, oh, sorry, this is not the right one. No, that's the wrong one. That's David Clement. Oh, yeah, he's a good guy. That's yeah, that's the wrong. But oh yeah, down here. Sorry. There's the David Parker down here, part of it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. There's, there's, there's one part here where David Clement oh, yeah. puts up one. Sarah Hoffman knows who she is and has no apologies, and she wants to lead Alberta to NDP to its true and democratic youths, roots. And he answers. Oink, oink. Yes. Now. And then he'll come on and apologize for the apology that he apologized for earlier. Yeah. Parker, we see through you, okay? It's not going to work on us. You're, we know you're a charlatan. We know you're a snake oil salesman. 
you have a, a, an inflated sense of self-importance and need to make yourself the center of attention, go ahead, do it. But you're going to self-immolate in the process. So, yeah, he had put that one out. and uh, But there was another one uh, as well that was um, pretty bad, and I'm uh, looking for it here. But he had put those ones out. And um, they caused people in his circle to say, you know what, too far. Mm -hmm. And now he's maintaining that Daniel Smith didn't want him at all to do all this kind of stuff. I don't know how much, how true that is. Yeah. It was, yeah. At all. That, that, that could be true. That could that not be true. true. It's clear that she was watching. He said, and he said that there was a whole bunch of people watching and all that kind of stuff. And, um, but you know, he, um, he said he apologized for that type of stuff and then came out a couple of days later and then launched that attack against Jenny Byrne and Pierre Polyev. And then he comes on David show and he apologizes again. Now apologies, we've talked about this on the show as well, only means something if when you apologize, you say that you're sorry, you say what it is you are sorry for specifically, you acknowledge how it could have hurt people, you make an offer to repair the damage if it can be done, you offer some atonement, and then you pledge to show you are sorry by committing to not repeating the offending behavior. He keeps on repeating the offending behavior. Continually. And then he gets himself a media opportunity, and then he starts with, oh, I need to apologize, or I'm only human, or, you know, oh, I'm, I'm a sinner. Mm -hmm. Like we are, and wraps it in all that kind of stuff like this, but I'm trying to be better and whatnot. If you keep doing it, if your apology is just something get through, get through the na current nanosecond, and then you go back to just doing it, and you keep apologizing for the same damn things over and over and over again, you're not sorry. No. No. He's you're not, not sorry. Maybe. He's just manipulating people, and he's good at oh, it. Oh, absolutely. He, he's good at it, but it's... Well, he's he's good at he's not that good at it actually. No, he's totally good honest. at it enough to fool a lot of people. Yeah, he's not but, good at it enough to fool the vast majority of people. Yes, but he's he he's the fast talking sort of guy, and um, I, I noticed as the interview went on went on, it was harder for Dean to like finish full thoughts because he would interrupt and and go to other places uh, with it. Um, then if you got that whole forgiveness for Trudeau thing again, and um, I'm not exactly sure for what he needed to be forgiven. That wasn't very clear because, you know, like you said, him not being able to go to somebody's funeral, that was provincial. I mean, it was all provincial. For, 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 Dean did point that out to him, but he still yeah, said, yeah. yes, but I still forgive Justin Trudeau. He's trying to create a narrative here, but I'm sorry. It's a narrative built on total bullshit. Yeah. He's trying to cast himself as the magnanimous person who's learning from his errors and trying to do better. It's almost like a... A bit like the Doug Ford thing, you know, where they're sitting there. And he's got he's got the the dumbass discount. Like, well, you know, he's not that too. He's, I know he's not that bright and all that kind of stuff, but his heart's in the right place. He's got that folksy friends thing, you know, and you know, it's like this. But like as we're discovering, this man's corrupt to the core. Well, it's the same thing. He's trying to give himself that that sort of godly. Oh well, you know, he's a sinner and a. A flawed human, you know, he had a drinking problem, but he stopped, allegedly. He, <laughs> that's well, one hell of a long dry drunk, let's put it that way. And Dean did um, call him out on that for saying, look, dude, uh, if Jenny Byrne has a, an alcohol problem, what you're doing is wrong on every possible level. And he's like, yeah, I, I should, I, I'm sorry for that. No, you're not. Because you, you've done it to other people. It's a repeating pattern with this guy. He's a record that keeps skipping. Well, that's, and as we saw it at the end, when we got to the end of the interview, he had circled all mm -hmm. the way back to forgiveness and apologizing. We just grew, got right back to the same starting point. But then what happened is... Uh, they started talking about stuff with regard to Jenny Byrne and whatnot and, and uh, the tweets and 
there were certain questions that I would have that I would have asked uh, that were not asked, and then they got into a conversation about the five things that he says that he wants, and the first one was open nominations. And I'm sitting there and I'm going, well, yeah, I can bet that you, I mean, I want open nominations too, right? I, I, I absolutely do. I think that you know, parachuting people in mm -hmm. is, is not the way to go. We have a whole democratic process and it's supposed to go from beginning to end, right down from the nomination all the way to the actual voting for your MP. But there's a quote by T.S. Eliot that I, I appreciate very much and it's, the last act is the greatest treason to do the right deed for the wrong reason. And I'm sitting there and going, yeah, I bet you want open nominations because everywhere you go, you want to instill a take back Alberta character and closed nominations don't allow you to do that. So he's against closed nominations, but I don't think he's against closed nominations because he wants greater participation in the sense that we mean it when we say greater participation. Let all the candidates put their names in and let the best candidate win and let them go out into the community and try and gain the support from as broad a community as possible and let them all come in and vote at the nomination stage. He wants an opportunity to put in a take back Alberta candidate there and increase participation from his people. But I'm not sure he wants increased participation from all people. He says he does. Mm -hmm. But in real life, women bullies tend to like the easier path. Oh, yes. And the easy fight. So I think that the, the desire for open nominations might be a little self-serving there. Then he said he wanted to end some corruption. And um, that's where he started pointing to uh, the conservatives Oh my God, we're already at 740 we're something. Time, yeah. Jeez. Uh, to potential corruption, which again gets us to that letter that we were talking about that we had hoped to introduce, which we will try to do tomorrow then. Mm -hmm. um, but then the conversation just sort of devolved into some esoteric thing about religion and philosophy and whatnot and kind of lost the plot. We never got to the last three things. So it kind of made me want to interview David myself in one way. Mm -hmm because I would have a little more focus to the questions, but I will, for me to be able to do that in the way that I would need to do that, that would be such a different vibe from what we've done on our interview project shows mm -hmm. that I don't think it really fits in with our culture. So it's it, probably it not going to happen. Yeah. Um, it doesn't fit in with our culture at all. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but I, I was left wanting more. Mm. I was, I left, I was left disappointed. All right, since we have to wrap up quickly, Mr. Uh, Kits and Cubs, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. We hope that you enjoyed listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember, sharing is caring, so please tell the peeps and poops all about us. If you don't want to miss an episode, you do not have to because of the Ray Girl. She sponsored our pod page, so if you scan that QR code under my chin, that will bring you there. If you're listening, that's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. If you'd like to support us in other ways, please subscribe to our YouTube page, make like Kit Elaine and go to True North Eager Beaver Media and click on like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to support us in other ways, the emergency hydration fund at the Beaver Lodge can be found by scanning the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head. And if you're listening, that's coffee, ko fi.com slash eager beaver, lowercase letters. Uh, all in one word, and uh, there you can help us out. We really, really appreciate that. If you want to write to us, true north eager beaver at gmail.com. And if you're listening on Apple, please give us some stars and reviews. We really appreciate that. Because democracy is something that you do, do write a letter, please, to your elected representative, your senator, or to your media asking for them to do better or to bring attention to a cause that matters to you very much. Please take a stand. Uh, let's see. I don't think I have anything else. Mr. Grizzly, uh, some words of wisdom, please. Yeah. Pay careful attention to individuals who come across, uh, as, uh, wolves in sheep's clothing of which David Parker is one. He will rob you of your rights. If he ever 
gets any of who he wants and what he wants into the seat of power in this country. He is a dangerous man to democracy. All right. Remember, kids, it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, cue that rooster. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph something for our opening and closing sequence music. Just before we go, I saw a, kit for a, a note from a Kit Saucy Go and Deeds podcast have also been conversations and not interviews. That's not new. That's correct. They did have a conversation. It's just that the conversation veered off into something esoteric and philosophical rather than finishing, you know, about what it had started. So for if you were into that, it was interesting. But if you were there for the actual, you know, what's going on, why he did that and the motivations, and it, we kind of lost that. But yes, it is a conversation it was meant to be an interview and it seems it will be a series. So we'll see. Maybe he'll get back to that. Indeed. All right, kids. Have a great day. I'll see you.